We're nearing the end of day three of Cisco Live EMEA 2024 here in the DevNet zone. Um, I'm here with Alfonso, one of our community members and somebody who's been doing talks and been a part of the DevNet zone for a while now, which is really rad. Um, and Alfonso, one of the things I find really fascinating about the experiences people have been telling me they have, not just this week, but kind of in general around the DevNet zone is, and around this community, is this idea that you know, no matter how experienced you are at doing some kind of like broadly speaking automation or working with, you know, that strange term programmability, whatever that happens to mean to whoever it is you're talking to, yeah. it's I find it really interesting the different types of experiences people have. It's not just one thing. Yes, we have workshop. Sorry, I'm pointing for anyone looking off camera, <laughs> looking at me. There's the things over there that you can't see. Our work, our hands-on workshops, or on the other side of this wall, our classrooms where the people are learning. Yeah. There's so many different ways to ingest content and learn and pick up your own pace. But I, I really wanted to give you a chance to kind of talk about what your, maybe not death that journey, but your your journey as a community member, as somebody who's like, at some point, didn't do automated things. And like, what is this? Why would I do it? Like, what did that look like to begin for you? Mm -hmm. Right. So, well, for, first of all, thank you, Jeff, for uh, the, this conversation, this opportunity to be here. And, uh, yeah, you know, in my personal experience, my journey here in DevNet, my journey through network automation began uh, out of a pretty um, uh, cumbersome situation. You see, I want to take you back to those uh, early days of the pandemic, not so long ago, certainly, although it feels like it was a lifetime In ago. the before times. <laughs> exactly, yeah, in the before times. Yeah, um, back then, I was a collaboration engineer. So I was doing uh, like voice and video, like these uh, uh, suites that uh, here with Cisco, we were, were very good at them. And, uh, you know, it was those days in the pandemic when it was already, we were certain that this wasn't going to go away anytime soon. So we needed to move our customers, we needed to enable them to work from the safety of their houses, right? From the safety of home. So we as collaboration engineers, we were the people to go for bringing, uh, you know, all uh, workers to work from home, from home uh, uh, methodology. And there was this customer, it, uh, one of the biggest banks in the world. They, all their traders, all their contact center people, they needed to be able to work from home. And you can do that for sure, their, their phones, their chats, whatever, it, but it takes a lot of clicks. It's very prone to errors, uh, copy and paste. You can mess up really good, it takes a lot of time. So at some point we were like, okay, maybe there's an easier way to do this. Maybe we can automate this some some shape or form. So we started digging a little bit uh, on this. We put together a couple of scripts. They worked a small scale. So we started to make it bigger and bigger and bigger. And out of nowhere, we had a solution ready to be used so that we could migrate all workers from around the globe to, we could enable them to work from the safety of, of their homes. I, so if, if you don't mind me interrupting for a moment, mm. I love where this story is going. I find it really fascinating, the having a problem, finding a solution. Exactly. Uh, for a sort of grassroots, I am curious about something because this is this has come up in a few other conversations I've had mm -hmm. where it sounds and people out there may be thinking this. Well, that sounds like a great story, and not to put you on the spot too much here, but <laughs> like, it sounds like a great story and it is. However, did you have to deal with like getting other people in the like outside of like maybe the handful of people you worked with to build the, the automation? Did you have to get people to buy into it or be on board with the idea of like, hey, we're going to do things different than we have been? And if you did have to deal with that, what was it like working with others to kind of show them like, if this isn't that big of a deal, it's going to help us? What was it like to kind of sort through those like personality or like company culture things that you had exactly. to work through? Yeah, and especially talking about a financial institution like this uh, bank is certainly the, the, because of how delicate the operations are, they're more than often, they're not very keen to you know, let people come up with uh, uh, creative, ultra creative solutions, right? But uh, at that point, we were lucky enough so that they gave us their, their trust. We had a very solid environment to test this so that we could fight against this asceticism, like, hey, you're gonna break my network. Uh, this is not gonna work. But it worked and we were able, with their support, we were able to showcase that this was, this was the solution. We were gonna be able to shrink this deployment from months to days, not even weeks. And that's how we were able to do it, with a little bit of trust, expertise, testing, 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 and with all this information, all this documentation mm -hmm. out there that back then, well, uh, uh, DevNet right. was already providing, so. That's really yeah. cool. Okay, so there's so much to unpack there, and I love, yeah. I really love hearing the success of that story. Um, 
something that I have encountered myself is that, okay, you do all those things, and then you, you might have a, a network engineer or somebody else who has a kind of classic mindset of what doing these roles could look like. Yeah. Um, I imagine you probably encountered something like this where there might be one or two people who feel, still continue to feel uncomfortable with the idea of automating away because, and I'll, I will stereotype the response, but the this, this stereotypical response might be something like, well, you're auto automating away my job and I don't have a job anymore. So when we, when we sit down and really think about it, it's not true, but it's not always easy to see why or how it's not true. So for you and your, the group you work with in your company, how has, how has automating and the, the time savings or the stress savings that the automation has done for you, how has that actually helped you and your team do other things that you might not have been able to do before? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So first and foremost, I would do. Um, I, I would like to talk about the part of unleashing your creativity, because by automating things, it's like this uh, same code. You're able to do more with less. You're able to integrate with other tools, with third parties, with open source. You're able to do more interesting things just by unleashing your creativity in the shape of code, in the shape of a script, in the shape of something of this sort. Yeah. And apart from that, there's many parts of the day-to-day -day network operation that honestly, they're not really worth having a person doing them because these are daunting jobs. It's the, the eternal copy and pasting prone to human errors and such that a machine can do, right? Like uh, uh, these, uh, these fellow colleagues, they can be put to do something more interesting, more invigorating, right. and to unleash your creativity. I, you know what? Thank you for saying it that way. <laughs> I know, and, and I mean this genuinely, I have mm. talked to, I've been lucky enough to talk to a lot of community members, both mm. DevNet community members. When I was still in sales at Cisco, mm. I talked to a lot of customers on a regular basis. And yeah. I empathize a lot with, with people who feel uncomfortable with the idea of automating. One, because you have to learn it. If you've never written code, yes. you're, it, it, the feeling is that you got to write code and you've got to learn Python. And all. You, you, have to, you have to, you have to. There's all these friction points that you mm. have to do. We know once we get through it, that's not, it's not binary. It's not I have to do this or I do this. Yeah. It's a nuance, but that's not obvious in the beginning for a mm -hmm. lot of people. And I think it also creates a sense of additional friction by not being able to see that clearly because you don't. It's not something you've done before, which yeah. creates resistance for those people. And so yes. I appreciate you explaining it that way because I hope what it is able to do is help someone out there feel a little less apprehensive about trying Absolutely. some kind of automation. And it does, you, I mean, you probably can speak to this, it doesn't mean that you need to learn how to be an app developer or how to write some code. Does that help at some point? Sure, but Absolutely. is it necessary? I mean, you, you tell me, but <laughs> I don't see it as a necessity. Yeah, no, certainly it's not a necessity and, uh, you know, Speaking of this, uh, right now the learning curve is like uh, 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 it's not as steep as it used to be. Right now, right now, it's way easier to learn these things up to the extent that you deem it necessary. That you think that it's going to be able to cover some interesting use cases to bring fresh things to the table when you talk with your stakeholders, when you talk with the, with your management. So it allows you, it empowers you to bring interesting things that will help you to save time do things uh, more efficiently, and overall, you know, bring fresh stuff, right? Absolutely. It's it, Now it's easier than ever to get these skills to the extent that you deem it necessary. I love that, I love that. Okay, last thing, put, okay. gonna put you on the spot. All Cisco right. Live, we're on day three, we got one more full day here, plus there are other activities that are still going on, but we got one more full day here in the DevNet zone. Sure. What, <laughs> not just the DevNet zone, but in general, it's Cisco Live. Uh -huh. If you could pick one thing that was really, just really fresh, really fun, totally rad, something that just got you, like that thing that you were like, that just really made me happy, whatever it was. If you could pick one thing, what would it be? Uh, like this year, yeah. the, the sessions at the DevNet Theater, mind-blowing. Really? Yeah. Okay, I, cool. I was just having a look at what uh, I, I wanted to attend and it's just been amazing. That's so, awesome. Yeah, if you have some time, you should step by because uh, there are really, really nice Very sessions cool. out there. Right on. Yeah. Alfonso, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. You know, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Anytime. Awesome.